because obviously when COVID was hitting uh, three years ago, we were just all scrambling around trying to get stuff. And this is kind of what I want to do to kind of work it through. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to today's vlog. Today's vlog is a Tech Tuesday recording on a Friday. Make of that what you will. Of course you'll be watching this anytime, but please don't forget, hit that subscribe button, give me a like if you can, if you're watching this. I've actually made this video today for my benefit, and your benefit as well. Now I've been teaching online for 12 years now. I first started it when I moved from Ireland, came over to Cambridge and wanted to keep on some students that were doing their grade eight exams and a few other students that I didn't really want to lose. And so I talked more about it in this vlog where I was talking about how I have students on all seven continents, including Antarctica. Teaching via Skype to Antarctica was an experience, one not to be forgotten uh, and probably never repeated again. But anyway, what I wanted to do today, I've had a number of students of various different ages all around the world who are struggling with their setup, even in this post-COVID world. And I kind of thought, you know what? It would be a really good idea to give you a video to talk through uh, about some good setups, whether you're having music tuition online with myself or you're a fellow music teacher, some things that you need to do to try and make online music lessons work better for you. I did a video at the start of COVID here. You might want to go and check that one out. This is more sort of geared towards a higher sort of end of what I think you should be getting because obviously when COVID was hitting uh, three years ago we were just all scrambling around trying to get stuff and this is kind of what I want to do to kind of work it through. Now the first thing you need is a device to communicate on and that's not as easy as you think. Yes you can grab your smartphone or a tablet and work through that but in particular if you're using Zoom uh, you need to disable the uh, well, original sound you need, to, you need to have the original sound on. No do you need to? Yeah the original sound needs to be on. That's so confusing I'm sure if you've been involved in trying to do anything via Zoom recently you'll know how confusing this original sound being on or off is but essentially you need to be able to put it on and you need to do that beforehand. Now I would suggest you need to get yourself a reasonable microphone. I've got some suggestions in the description below of microphones that I have suggested to students over the years. You can make do with the built-in microphone if you've got a decent computer but I would advise you to have a computer. Now the computer I'm showing you here is my 2017 iMac. It's quite old now, it's getting on a little bit. You could get my iMacs that are newer, but one of the big things I've done is upgraded the webcam recently. There's a link to that below. I really like this webcam. It shoots in 1080p. Um, it, it just crisps up the picture a little bit. Now obviously you don't necessarily need that if you are the one, uh, the student who's learning, but you need a decent enough webcam. You need a decent enough connection. I would suggest always that you have a wired connection if you can for your lesson. Wi-Fi is great, but if it drops out and you're paying for that lesson then you are then responsible for what's going on there. So get a decent computer with a decent webcam and a decent microphone that's really really important and make sure that original sound is on. You can use other platforms. I used to use Skype for years. Microsoft have stopped supporting Skype now, so it's not as good. And I ended up having to make the investment a year ago into paying for Zoom. It has more or less been worth it. I was in this stage of refusing to pay for it. I thought, why should I be paying for something that I've had for free for so long? But it is worth it and it has worked quite well. Um, Google Meet is okay, but it's very difficult to get the audio settings right. FaceTime is a nightmare. It's great for talking to family, don't get me wrong. I think it's a wonderful piece of software, but actually for teaching music lessons on it has not really worked. One of the issues, again, being the sound quality. Of course, sound that you speak, speech sound, is much lower in decibel level compared to playing the saxophone, and most software can't cope with the saxophone, hence why we were talking about this Zoom thing with the original sound. On. Next up, you do need a device that you can play backing tracks from, and that's where a smartphone really does come in handy. I also recommend the AnyTune Pro app. You can check out my review here. Uh, AnyTune Pro is great on the computer, transcribe is good, but really what you need, you need a separate device to play your backing tracks and then a separate device to communicate on. That means that I can fully hear what you're playing. I can really understand what's going on between you and how you're interacting with the backing tracks. So get a smartphone and get a Bluetooth speaker. This is the Bluetooth speaker I've got. It's a JBL Extreme. This works really, really well particularly now I've started having people come back into the house my studio's up here I haven't really got the room to teach in here so I use the Bluetooth speaker downstairs and it has been fantastic next up is a printer or a tablet where you can easily view the PDFs that I'm sending you I like to send a lot of PDFs particularly now I've been doing sax.coach make sure you go over there check out the lessons that are there there's lots and lots of lessons every single one of those lessons has a PDF worksheet for you to work through beautifully curated and put together with certain exercises on for certain pieces it's well worth getting hold of a printer 
that you could print them out, put them in a folder. Although, if you're more digitally minded, this is where a tablet would come in handy. I love iPads. Uh, here's my iPad Pro. This is what I would recommend, but if you're on a budget, then you know there are other tablets available. But you need something that is crystal clear that you can easily load the PDFs up and also store the PDFs in an order. So I use iGigBook, which is really good for storing the real books and things like that, but you might find PDF Expert or Notability or something else like that, which might work better for you in terms of being able to store and also annotate. There's also apps like Fourscore, which I have when it first came out, but I don't really use it that often. And then finally, a sack stand and a music stand. You definitely need a music stand. You need somewhere that you know you can read your music from. Don't sort of neglect that. Don't hide it in a saxophone case. And have a sax stand because you know during the lesson I might want to talk to you about something. I might want to go through something. Having a nice saxophone stand. Here are my Hercules stands that I use for my tenor and my soprano. Um, they work really, really well and they're great for having down and then pick it up. I used to, told the story many times in the vlog before about when I had my flat, I used to put my tenor by the TV because I knew that if I left the saxophone in its case, I wouldn't practice as much as if I put it on there. Now this has helped the old uh, practice a day uh, cross off sheet. You can see more of it in this review. So as I close this little mini vlog to repeat, what do you need? You need a computer with a decent webcam and a decent microphone so that you can communicate well with me. Try and get a wired connection if you can. Does doesn't have to be a computer, but if it's a tablet or a phone, you need to make sure you know how to disable the original sound before we start uh, the lesson. That's really, really important. Next up, you need a good device to play your music back, either a computer with Transcribe or ideally a phone, a smartphone with AnyTune Pro that you can then pair to a Bluetooth speaker so that we can easily hear each other. I can hear you playing those backing tracks. I can hear you working with the exercises, the metronome, all those sort of things. So you kind of got three devices you really need because the third device is something to read your music on. Now that might be a printer so you can print the music that I emailed to you or the lead sheets or the worksheets that can all be printed off, put into a folder on your music stand so you can work through that and practice. Or you need a tablet where you can easily read your music at a good quality and store it in an app, which means you can easily access it. If you've got any questions or comments or you need to know more, everything I've mentioned is in the description below. Click on those links and you can access them. Um, and let me know, let me know what you want in your setup and maybe some ideas that you've come up with over the last three years if you've been studying music online or if you've been teaching music online. Today has been delivery day as well. Uh, not only have I got those new reeds, uh, I've also got a new light, which I've just set up now, a new LED light. Wex opened a new shop, Wex the photography shop if you're in the UK. Uh, opened a new branch in Cambridge yesterday. It was quite an expensive day for me. Uh, I feel a bit like you lot when you're going around buying mouthpieces, you know, you kind of think, this will just solve my problem, won't it? I'll stop there. Those of you who've been watching the vlog for a while will know that I have often in the past that the advice of Bramford Marsalis played clarinet reads on soprano sax. You just get a different sound, a different depth of the sound, a bit more colour to play with. So what I've done, I've got hold of a clarinet Ven Reed 2.5. I'll see how it gets on. I've got to say, one of the things I was doing when I was doing my order to Daddario for reads uh, a couple of days ago, I've got loads and loads of alto reads in my drawer because I haven't used any other read apart from that original Venn read that I got on the alto all the way back here. I haven't found one on tenor and I've had to buy, you know, six months worth of uh, select jazz reads there because I'm sorry, just the Venn read on tenor isn't working for me. 
but I wonder if it'll work on Soprano. Stay tuned and find out. Thank you very much for watching. By the way, that piece there was Strasbourg Saint Denis, uh, originally by Roy Hargrove. That was us playing it at the Cambridge Arts Theatre. Thank you to those of you who have watched those. Uh, that video footage I have put on from Our Music in Paris. There is another video to come on the way, one of my little projects in the side pocket. But I hope you found today useful. I hope you'll stick around uh, and maybe approach me via Sax Coach if you want to have a one-to-one -one lesson online or even in person. We'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.